our discussion about uh, equilibrium and equilibrium. Um, but up until now, we've talked about the reaction as it proceeds from a weak acid or a weak base to the conjugate. And when we talk about salts, what we're talking about is an ionic compound that contains a conjugate acid or base, typically, well, not typically, a weak acid or weak base conjugate. So we're going to look at what happens when we take those, typically with some other spectator ion or counter ion, and add those to a solution. How are those going to affect pH? So again, we're talking about an equilibrium because when we put the conjugate acid or base into solution, it's going to act as an acid or base, right? So the equal, it's still going to be an equilibrium process, um, but it's not going to be it's a little bit more involved because we have to then follow what equilibrium is actually occurring. All right, so let's look at today's challenge problem for the salts. <coughs> so here we have, we want to determine the pH of 50 milliliters of a 0 0.10 molar uh, sodium acetate solution, right? Where the we have the accompanied acetic acid uh, Ka, right? So if we look at putting this into solution, right? If we take that and put it into solution. We're going to have NaC2H3O2. And when it goes into solution, put it with the water, for example, it's going to dissolve, right? Because all acetate, we're, most acetates are soluble and all alkali metals are soluble. So we're going to get the two um, ions. going to ignore the water right because all we're doing it is dissolving right and we because this is dissolving we don't have any direct effect on uh, pH but then if we look at the two ions can they react with water to form an acid or a base So if this is going to act, it's going to then accept. So we would end up with NaOH plus H plus. If this was, we'd end up with HC2H3O2 plus OH minus. Right? Well, if we look at this, this one is a strong base, right? Sodium hydroxide is a strong base and strong bases completely dissociate. So that means this reaction does not happen. So the sodium is just a spectator ion. Where this, now if we look at this one, right? This is the weak acid, acetic acid. This has a Ka. So this reaction is going to happen, and this is what's going to affect pH. Right? So if we have a reaction that's going to affect pH, and we want to know something about pH or the equilibrium conditions, we can set up an ice table, right? And we just have to know the internet initial concentration. Right? We're going to ignore the water because it's a liquid. Right. If we look here, come back up here, our sodium acetate, we had a 0 0.10 molar solution. So when it breaks up, right, all of that concentration gets transferred in a stoichiometric relationship, so one to one, to the acetate ion. So the initial concentration of the acetate ion is this 0 0.10. Right. Our initial concentration of both of the two reactants is going to be zero, right? We're going to assume they're both zero at the beginning, right? So that means that at equilibrium, we have to have some of these masses. So the equilibrium is going to shift towards the reactants. So we're going to lose some X there 
add some x to each one of these sides, right? In the stoichiometric relationship, which in this case is a one-to-one. -one. So at equilibrium, the concentration of the acetate will be 0 0.10 minus x. The concentration of the acetic acid would be x, and the concentration of OH minus would be x, right? So if we come down now and we write the K expression for this reaction, right? That is going to be the concentration of H2, or excuse me, H C2 H3 O2 minus times the concentration of OH minus divided by the concentration of C2. This would not be minus, excuse me. That one would not be. C2 H3 O2. That one is minus, right? That's the equilibrium expression, right? Because we take products over reactants just like we've always been doing. But this is a base, right? So this we would call Kb. We were given the Ka for the acid, right? So we have to go back to our Kw. Let's change this. Kw is equal to Ka times Kb. So our Kb then for this would be Kw divided by Ka, which would be equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, which is Kw, divided the, by the value we had for Ka, which was 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. <clears throat> And when we do that math, we end up with 5.5. I'm going to round it to 6 times 10 to the minus 10th. <clears throat> right. So we can say that even if we look at the acid, this weak acid, acetic acid, because the K value is less than 1, it's going to be reacted favorite, right? Most of it's going to stay as the protonated form, just dissolved. But if we look at the acetate, Right now, its Kb is even smaller. So weak acid is going to give us a weak base, and we see that as we look at the conjugate, it's even a weaker base. So weak acid is going to give us a weak base. Right? So then we can come back over here. Then this becomes 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10th is equal to, this is x, that is x, divided by 0 0.10 minus x. Right. So at this point, we can solve, right? as my physics professor used to say, the chemistry or the science is over now. It's just math. So we had to figure out how we're going to solve this. Okay. If we look at the difference between this number and this number, right? this would be 1 times 10 to the negative 1. So if you look at the difference between that number and this number, that is what we refer to as nine orders of magnitude. right? which means that that's going to be highly reactant favored. This one is, right? Which means the majority of this is going to stay as the acetate. Very little of it is going to become the acetic acid, which means that X is going to be very small. So what I'm going to say is that we're, I'm going to assume that X is much, much smaller than the 0 0.1, right? And that means that when we do this subtraction, when we take 0.1 minus x, our answer is going to be essentially 0.1, right? Which means that we can rewrite this as 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10th is equal to, or approximately, x squared over 0.1, right? Because we are assuming this x is small, right? And the, the nice thing about this assumption is that that takes the quadratic equation out of play. Right? It just becomes very straightforward algebra at this point. Which for me is nice because I don't have a fancy calculator. Right? So we can then solve for X. X from this is going to be 7.46 times 10 to the negative sixth molar. Right? Because we made an assumption, we should make sure that we're not making. Right? a mistake, so we're going to check this assumption. 
by taking the value that we said was smaller than divided by what it's smaller the answer divided by what we said it was smaller than times 100 to make sure that we're not making a mistake and when we do this we get 7.46 times 10 to the negative three percent which means that there that this number is less than much less than one percent of that number so we can assume that this is going to be okay and i would say that this assumption passes right if you're using this assumption that is fine the two rules that i suggest or i, I recommend is that when you compare this number the order of magnitude on the k value to the value that we're saying is smaller that should be at least three orders of magnitude or greater right so the difference between this number and this number has to be at least three four or more will always work three sometimes work and if you make this assumption you should write it down and check it right? if the assumption doesn't work you get to go back and do the quadratic so which isn't the end of the world it's just um more problematic <clears throat> all right so now we've done all this work we found x but again this is the point where we've done a lot of work we found x but x may or may not be the answer we're looking for right so we have to go back to what we were look interested in solving for right in this problem we wanted the ph well x is the concentration of oh minus right so this is equal to h minus right which will help us get the ph but it is not the ph right and the way i'm going to do it is by first calculating the poh which is going to be the negative log of the h oh minus concentration 7.46 times 10 to the negative 6. this ends up being 5.13 and then ph is equal to 14 minus poh which is 14 minus 5.13 so our answer is 8.7 by 7 i mean 8 7. <clears throat> right. if we look up here this had two significant digits so down here in ph this one also has to have two significant digits which means two decimal places this value here is an estimate of this order there right so this tells us that the concentration of h plus is about 10 to the minus eighth the significant digits are for the ph are in the decimal places so if you have three significant figures you should be reporting three decimal places in terms of ph questions on that so again we're just applying the same <clears throat> principles we did before we are just now um, looking at one additional step where we have to always be concerned about what is going to be determining or affecting pH or what is involved in the actual equilibrium that we're that's in question any questions about that 